Hey, what's going on everyone? This is your surely back with another video and today we're gonna be doing some Fame Mal offlane. So haven't done one in a little bit, so we we'll definitely give him a spin. He hasn't really quite changed much in terms of items and whatnot. The only big thing is of course the quest changes, which actually impacts how I like to actually play Fame Mal because I like to do certain kind of text well depending on the matchup, like against the Glux, I actually like going Titan's Quest because that's going to make me a lot more dopo against this early game threat. But then I get a really good Razor back, so if he alls in on me, I can pop this and I can duel him much, much better. But I can't go this item anymore because of how they change the scaling with the healing and whatnot. So it would take me forever to level this quest up. So I actually have to be going either Warrior's Quest or World Quest. So we're going to be giving World Quest a shot. Because I haven't really played World Quest in the off lane on um, Fame Mal. I tend to go with the Warrior Quest, Titans Quest because they do offer better sustain in terms of health wise, but that all that got changed with the quest changes. So I think going like um the World Quest is actually gonna be better now since I think the healing is a little bit more equalized across the different quest options. So definitely be going the kind of assassin build. This is just so we can blow up the because they have a pretty squishy team cup looking at them. So we can definitely really kind of blow up people in the mid to late game. And going something like a next will really help us do that even better, right? We'll be going Q. This is just so we can have a little bit better strain power against the Grug, so we can take his damage a bit more because we can do the auto Q reset and whatnot. So we can actually. We do a lot of damage with that basic attack, so we can actually use the uh, passive to our advantage in this matchup. Do we have to just use our kill to be able to take that damage right there? I'm putting a world right there so I can hopefully spot the claw if she's walk decide to walk through the lane. I'm gonna hold on to my ability just in case if the claw decides to show up, I can level up my arm B and use that to get out. Oh, my wave is shoved in, so I, I can probably actually get away with what's going E right now. So we are getting low, That's we just have to be mindful of where the Claudia is at at this point. I'm not too sure if she's on the um, blue side. Okay, she's on the... We, we see her now, so that means that um, we can actually get pretty aggressive right here in just a sec. And we get early kill against the Grux. Very good for us because Grux typically can have a bigger um, damage threat than us because um, of his passive. But we play around our passive really well, keep choking him with our empower autos, and we're just able to easily, easily get him right there. I have to take a reset right here. Um, I'm gonna go to typical build, so we're gonna start um, stacking mana. This is gonna be a really great scaling iron for a bunch of physical um, power over time. And I guess we have a couple options. I'm thinking Pain Weaver is always a really great option on Fame Mount personally, so we can definitely go that. Use that movement speed to our advantage to really outmaneuver the Grok. And I mean, Pain Weaver is a such a really great item anyways on um, Fame Mount being able to have a much higher mobility across the board. We just saw him use his arm B so that means we can actually get a Fable Shrave right here if we just um, walk up to him. And he is respecting our um, damage. I was about to say that but he just walked up so we just kind of got a really good um, auto right there. Yeah. 
And yep, this is a fairy dead quartz. I'll let the crunch have it. Because he can start the snowball. Because I'm winning this lane already. So he can get that kill. He can use that to hopefully probably push across the map a lot more than I can. Because I'm just an off lane at the end of the day. Okay. Well, I decided that she wants to kind of cover the wave. But we can obviously bully her a lot because we're buying this. Interesting choices have been made. So, I really want to go to you, but, but Brooks, I know he's coming back 100%. Yep, we do see him. So, I might. I'm actually doing fine in terms of health mana, so I can probably. Um, because we made the collide low, so we're not particularly actually scaled her, because we can honestly just finish her off if she tried to come gank us um, pretty quickly. We just use the arm beat to dash away. They just so this is how we just really um outrange the Grugs, right? He's just not gonna be able to really do much. Missed my cannon there, which is a little unfortunate, but we did that too because we're trying to chunk him a little bit before we go back to lane with more items and whatnot. So we kinda he kinda had to sit on that chunkiness we did to him right there. And he's already getting low on the mana right there. So he might be looking to get an early reset, but that just means that we can actually get a pretty nice freeze at the tower. Um, and we'll start to kind of alpha him at this rate. He did not actually leave. Interesting. Because we definitely can just go in really hard on him. Yep, and we get a kill right there. I'm not sure what he's, he's thinking. We definitely um, came back to um, base fresh. We are irons up on him. We are health mana wise above him. So we can definitely just um, really kind of shred through him right there, as you guys saw. Nice. I'll let that show up in because I want to just get the two buff and look to reset off of this. And this is exactly how you just play this matchup against the Grug. So you have the mobility to always escape him whenever you don't want to take bad trades. But you also have the mobility to also initiate really good trades whenever you want to. As you guys saw. So definitely let's pick up home. Actually, we want, let's go in front of them. And the main reason why we're actually um, going in front of them is there. Because technically in front of them, actually it's a better pain with Mind Racer because you get the mana from it. But also... Um, the passive on the phone, and you actually do a lot of damage to Cam, so we can get the passive early and be able to really kind of like, um, take these camps really quick when we're looking to invade. Alright, that's a Claw Ultimate, it actually does not have any more, so very good on us. We just on B out. And look at that. He used his ultimate right there. Oh, okay. That's a lot of um, blinks after us. Oh, wow. So I blinked through the Clyde, but her auto still land. That's really unfortunate right there. But I mean, that's like two blinks they just both use on me. So like, okay, fine. If I had my blink a little earlier, I would have been totally fine. But they just decided they really want me dead. So they just took that opportunity, right? But neither of them have blinks or ultimates, so Crunch can maybe clean up if he decides he wants to go on either the Grux or the um, Fly. Under attack. An allied tower's destroyed. Come right here. Which is all her right there. Very easy stuff right there. Because you'll show it already low enough as you guys saw. So I lose my other T1 unfortunately. But we still have the mobility to stay safe. And we obviously can still win against this Grux if we keep playing it good. So I'm going to shove this in. He makes He's making the call for mini prime. That's actually a good call. Because I have the prior to shove this in. Grux have to deal with this. And we definitely um, just scale, especially with the mind racer. So we're only going to get keep 
He's especially stronger as the game goes on. Nice. Can we maybe look at the works? I'm letting the um, crunch go around. I can maybe bait it by just going for the minion. Yep, I bait it. That's a works ultimate that you have to use. And with the mini prime, we can actually do some serious damage to the tower. Yeah, we can definitely go pick this up because as long as the crunch is here, we can probably have a lot of pressure to take that T1, so we can go T1 for T1 on the left side. But she might, he might actually have to go and rotate to the um, thing too soon. Nice. Very good kill. Um, looks like Kali's on the right side, so we may lose the next, um, the first fainters right here. But that means that I can at least get the tower um, um, destroyed right here since we just killed the Quirks. And I actually don't have a big enough wave to take this. Because I think Grux is just going to be coming back here in any any second now. The best I can do is maybe clear this one last wave, let the um, minion wave shove in, and hopefully do a little bit more damage. But we don't, we want to actually be able to take the tower right here. Because yep, Grux is right there now. Okay. Which is easy to kind of get out of that. Not sure why he's still chasing because we obviously just kind of um, outmaneuver him. Wow, he really is out for blood right here. 100%. But I guess it's because the um, Loki is just right here. Okay. I guess that's why he was chasing really hard because the um, Mokish was looking for us right there. So we're getting a lot of pressure on the left side. But once again, we're doing good on the kills and the farm. We do outscale, so... Um, if this means that my mid lane and dual lane can get less pressure because a lot of people are focusing me this game, I'll take I'll take that any day of the week. I might go. There might be on faint twos. No one's on the map. Yep, they're on it. So I'm actually gonna see if we can maybe help clean up right here. That's huge. We're kind of just throwing off the um, Murdoch. He has a lot of tools he can actually get away from us. So I'm just kind of hovering him a little bit. Um, Rox is making a push. I'm actually... Mm, okay, I actually have to help this then. Because how... Just to do a little bit of damage and then I'm probably going to just go back to um, left lane. Nice. Rox actually rotated. He should have just kept pushing right there. Because he could maybe get the T2 uh, potentially. If I'm not complaining, that means that um, we can still keep the T2 alive. Try to tell our team not to fight because that's five people over there. It looks like the monkey is going to get caught out, unfortunately. A lot of people are really kind of chase for kills, but that's, that's a good thing why we're kind of split pushing left because we're going to be able to take towers and someone has to answer our T2 push right here. Because Grox is still on that side, I'm uh, fine enough. And we get our um, next on our next pass, so that's going to be a really good power spike for us. Yep, 
Finally, we have someone answering us, but it's a little too late because we're going to be able to secure this T2 on the left. Right here. I'm going to try to actually go look mid, because maybe I can catch this Mogus trying to um, go for the Riverbird, for example, right here. Oh wow, I just totally missed it then, if it was that kicking. Nice. With the kill right there, I definitely have to back off because I'm family oof. But this we're gonna get some really great items online right here. We're gonna finish up my racer, we get next, and we're gonna definitely try to build into pain we for next. Because we love that movement speed 100 percent and penetration as well. So let's grab this. Now we're gonna go build into pain weaver. So definitely we should be putting on some serious hurt against the enemy team. Uh, I'm gonna die right there, unfortunately. I tried to help my team because they were kind of going in hard right there, but unfortunately we didn't. We're able to get out. That's when Pain Weaver would have been really good, so we can be able to like escape that situation much faster. But um, we went for the phone them because it would give us a bit more damage, just not the mobility to stay elusive, right? I mean, we can probably use our quest a bit better right there too. So, hmm. He's making a call for mini prime, so we should uh, we need to actually go over because I think a lot of people are actually over there by the looks of it. There's no reason why the dual lane is gonna be there right there. I'm gonna go down right there because that was just so short on the next two. That would be really cool if I can pop that and do a ton of burst damage. But I think we'd still won that overall by the looks of it. So nice. Definitely go attack mid. We can maybe knock down that tower and go for faint twos in just a sec. Enemy tower under siege. I think Mogus have to back off though, but Mogus a bit healthy for this fight, so... Oh no, Mogus went back in! Hmm, okay, so... Mogus is dead, so they have a numbers advantage, they might try to, um... force the faint twos. Might try- is he going for the Mogus still? Can't tell. Because they definitely want to do that. So I might be actually looking to get a pick right here, and that pick might be the Modok, you know, in just a sec. Hmm. A little tricky to go in. Oh, he's actually hurting us quite a bit, so we actually can't take this. Hmm, okay. I want to try and knock down that um, pesky tower right there. So, I'm going to try and shove this in. My farm is not great, but that's because I've been rotating so much, because this enemy team has been really kind of aggro 
going in for these like really aggressive picks. So we have to sh answer that, but that means that we couldn't farm as well we like right now. But we get pain with it now. Ash. So it's gonna be really great for us. It should back off. Alright, let's go grab Pain Reaper. We're probably gonna go for Dread because it's we're gonna get some good magical armor against the Mogesh, which is gonna really actually help out, um, surprisingly. So definitely let's go pick up Dread right here. We can very get the Gwerks. You just have to be a little bit mindful. We see we see where Claudia's at, so we know where she is. Yep, and there's nothing the Gwerks can do because we just really kind of put him down 2v1. Pretty easy stuff. And we see the Morgish rotating over. I want to see if we can maybe get a pick on her. Oh yeah, I'm actually going to be looking <clears throat> mid. Maybe me and Morgish can burst down this other Morgish right here. A lot of people mid. So let's actually try to hover a little bit. Wow, that did not hit. But I was pretty good right there, pretty easy enough. I'm actually actually be going to help my Alright. Looks like we are gonna be backing off. But we definitely have the mobility. They they cannot catch us at all. They're still chasing us really hard. I wonder if we can just bait them to keep um chasing after us. Definitely this um question be careful. Okay. We're just gonna go jump over here. Punch may not be able to get out there. I tried my best to try to hover for him, but I think he's just gonna maybe still go down there potentially. Actually he still got out, that's huge. Let's go. <clears throat> Alright. So I'll take it back, get some more items, get that holds back, and then we can be looking to either split push, go for more picks, or go fight this next thing too. I think the mortgage unfortunately is gonna go down right there. Not the most ideal, 100%. A lot of people are kind of grouping up on mid, so they might be actually going for a big push on that side. If so, we can probably... Are they actually going for prime? Okay, we're gonna dip... No one's actually answering left, so we're gonna try our best to maybe hopefully take down this tower in just a sec. And Mokis is actually over here, funny enough. We just wait her out. Okay, then she's dead. Nice. I think a lot of people are still over there, so we can actually keep pushing now. Because definitely we was kind of scared of the Mokis damage up her because she's quite deadly to us as an assassin. But we definitely scale up and we can bust it down before she can bust us down. And we get out of here, let's go. Got the um, inhibitor right there, that's gonna really, really help our team. They have a lot more pressure on the map and get fired for these objective fights. Nice. Uh, we'll take it back right here. I'm assuming this Claw is gonna try to come and farm a red site, but we took more than half of it, including the red buff. So that Claw is not gonna be super happy with what we took right there. So nice, nice. So 
I guess in this kind of Tinka, we might go to Tower of Mallet because that Mogish, yeah, that Mogish is the strongest. So we want to try to build a way to counter her, and that's with more magical armor and we get and it's nice stats all around. So it's not too bad on us. And look at that, the, he had to blink out, but we're still gonna catch him right here. Nice. And looks like the claw is pathing over here, so let's see if we can um, catch her. We not, might not be able to because it's just... Wait, she walked back this way. Interesting. Because I think she just kept w w running away from me. Then um, we would have been like... Uh, what do you call? She, she wouldn't actually got out of there. But I think she decided to try to juke me because she might be predict predicting that I'm trying to predict where she's going. But not too sure actually still. We can't keep pushing anymore, so we look just kind of back off. Take some more resources while we're at it. Can we just go for five? I think it, well, we're healthy enough as a team to take it, and we have more than enough damage to actually do it. So yeah, let's actually start it. Because it won't. Because, especially for us, we have Infernum, it's actually going to be doing surprising amount of damage to the climb. So with the whole team here, and my damage, and everyone else's damage, we're going to actually bust it down really fast right here. Nice. Take a reset right here. Um, definitely going to be picking up um, Pickpon Mallet. So... We're actually doing plenty of damage. Let's get some magical armor instead. So not being the most efficient um gold wise, but this mortgage is twelve and three. She's doing a ton of damage. I want to get some a little magical armor against her um before finishing this item out. Um, we might have to be careful mid. Cause I don't think me and Morgus, me and Morgus have to be careful, so... Kinda of like back up, cause we're trying to wait for our team to catch back up, right? I can be fine, safe by myself, but not the Morgus. She's very immobile for the most part. Cause we want the Morgus to be pushing right or mid with us, but he's been... He's slowly taking his time, so we just have to wait for him to catch back up with us right here. Oh, she's gonna alt out, but that means we can maybe. That's actually fine because because of that skirmish, we're gonna get all three inhibitors, and we have the prime buff to regen our HP back up, so we can look to re-engage after we get uh, HP online. And look at that, we're gonna be able to end here in just a second. So definitely GG's, well played by the um, team right there, so... That was some good old female offlane gameplay right there, and we definitely did a really good job at winning our matchup, and then we just kind of... Like I said, we just scale really hard, especially with this build with like Mind Racer, we scale incredibly, incredibly well. Just having a ton of physical power as the game goes on, and we definitely just do some really good assassin stuff right there. So definitely, um, most damage 
on the whole game right there. Morgus came close because um, she was doing really good, but we still kind of out damaged right there. So we've definitely been putting in the serious work this game. So yeah, that frame mod definitely um, feels really great in the offlane still. I actually kind of like the world quest because getting that next really helps us being able to burst down people. And I mean, that's always, always been the obvious choice for frame mod going the next option. But like offlane, it's just like, it was weird because um, with how the, how the quest used to be, you kind of like, by going the world quest, you're really hurting your sustain because the world quest gives you the least amount of um, sustain compared to the warriors and titans quest. So it just makes sustaining in lane really challenging if you try to go for the world quest from time to time. But now that the um, quest got changed, the sustain, how you get the sustain is different. Now it's like more equalized in terms of which quest options you want to go with. And definitely going the world quest is actually but pretty much gonna always be a pickup on Fame Mount. It feels really good to go with him in the offlane right now. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know down in the comments where the heroes, where the builds from a showcase. Thank you as always for all the amazing support, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.